90.3 KEXP, where the music matters. I'm John Richards, and it took me four minutes and 25 seconds to walk down the hallway. It didn't really. <laughs> it's right down the way, Rocky. It really did. How you doing, Thanks Joe? for being here so early, man. Oh, man, thanks for having I me I appreciate in. it. We're going to talk some more, but uh, if you're ready to go, we got Rocky Votolata live here in the studios. Take it away. Turn the feathers white In the judge's chamber That we lived inside Tears of laughter The only medicine In sight I need the potion For the poison The antidote's All antiquated Black record cures Are turning the tables I wish I was a tan and bone. I wish I was a tan and bone. I wish I was a tan and bone. I think maybe I was. Sounded just like my old man did Taught me to put a brick through The other guy's window And I built this wall between the season And these thoughts I used to know I'm so sorry I let you down But my shepherd led me to my redemption Cut and paste this up to you now I'm gonna make this all up to you somehow Turning the tables around I wish I was a tan and bum I wish I was a tan and bum I wish I was a tan and bum Kids can't make sense out of anything Tearing down the walls between the reasons And the record cures that keep me spinning, spinning I wish I was a tan and bone I wish I was a tan and bone I wish I was a tan and bomb. I think maybe I was. Ninety point three KEXP, Rocky Votolato live here on the morning show. The new album you've been hearing here at KEXP, Hospital Handshake. So we've been playing your music for years, Rocky. Thank you, John. I no, appreciate it. No, thank you for making the music <laughs> for so many years. We love it. Uh, a local artist, and uh, you played a show for our, our local listeners. You played a show recently at the Fremont Abbey, a great location, and uh, we had an event there. You and I, and That's a bunch right. of people that kind of inspired you to play there. That's we had a right. Big, big dinner at the Fremont Abbey. We love it there. Yeah, it's, it was great. I got to meet the llama. Yeah. Zen there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we met our llama friend and uh, we had dinner, and uh, later you played there for a show, which is a great location to play. Yeah, it's strange. I'd never come across it all these years playing in yeah. Seattle. And uh, that room is incredible. I mean, the acoustics are great. I just, I really loved playing there. Yeah. And it kind of reminds me to talk about your living room tour, too, because that's. Yeah. 
I, you know, that's a lot. You see a lot more of that now. I know a bunch of artists who've been doing that. Can you explain to people what it, what, it, it literally is a living room tour, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> I know it sounds strange, but uh, <clears throat> it's uh, it's just, you know, it's it's I think the most organic way to bring music to people. Um, I'm really grateful for the opportunity to do it because, you know, um, these hosts, these people who host the shows, uh, my fans all over the country open up their home and um, it's a ticketed event, so we sell like somewhere between 30 and 50 tickets online. Yeah. And then, um, so it's a secret location, and you don't get the, uh, the address until you purchase the ticket. <laughs> and so, you know, people don't really know where they're going. Um, Gotta have a secret password, yeah. there's a handshake. <laughs> totally, but, uh, but it works out really well. Yeah. I love doing it because it's so intimate, um, especially, you know, with, with just showing up with an acoustic guitar. You know, I don't have to do a sound check. There's no right. PA system, no right. stage, no lighting setup. It's right. just, um, you know, just me and the guitar and uh, get to have that really organic um, connection with people. And someone who wants to play music, too, it allows you, I know you're going back to some of these places and you're touring the U.S. again. It allows you to go to the clubs where you might not be able to do that because you can only play so many times, yep, so many cities. True. And so you get to go back to these locations, too, I would suspect. Yeah, yeah, I'm going back. Um, I just Yesterday, I just announced a uh, full U.S. tour um, to support the new record. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to have a full band for that tour. Oh, so we'll, it'll be a totally different kind of experience, yeah. you yeah. know, play the rock clubs. and. I don't know if you've looked at the list of dates, <laughs> Rocky, but it's immense. You're going to be out yeah. there a while. <laughs> I we'll, know. We'll talk more about it here in a sec about your tour and uh, returning to Seattle for some shows. But if you have another one, we'd love to hear it. Yeah. Yeah. This is the title track for the new record, Hospital Handshakes. <laughs> an exercise or an exorcism if I am where pilots fly towards the explosion in the sky the bright colored light suffering the horizon of my mind I'm a patient with no patience Hospital handshakes We must each be broken If we're ever to be made new again The current of this current Painting me golden Letting on me away from this lonely land of time You're a ghost in the sun A massacre on Silent sea, deafening defeat, drowning the minor second until there's no line between the truth and the lies we're all hiding behind. If it's a choice, what will we decide when we choose sides? The darkness and the light We must each be broken If we're ever to be made new again The current of this currency is pain Yet it's painting me golden Painting me gold. No longer gonna heal a 
up now from this trauma I close the window shorten the shadow hospital handshakes we must each be broken if we're ever to be KEXP, Rocky Votolato live here on the morning show. The new album is Hospital Handshakes. Rocky heading out on a very big tour with a band. That's right. And heading <laughs> to Europe, back here in the U.S. And your date, I'm already looking ahead to August. August 29th at the Crocodile will uh, we'll finish things up. That's a long ways off. It is a long ways off. <laughs> yeah. How do you feel about touring right now? You feel good? I feel really good about it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of back to work. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's just good to be... Um, you know, playing shows, and it's just been a really good year so far with the the new album coming out. So. Well, for it, this album too, and where you're at now is a bit of a rebirth. It feels like, right? Like you've talked about this that um, you were a bit done with music and a bit done with touring, and kind of at a standstill music wise. Did you yeah. come close to quitting music? Did I, you? I did. Yeah. You know, I I definitely came close to it. I you know, I pretty pretty much made up my mind that I I wasn't going to keep going on with it. I think it was um, around the summer of 2012 uh, when Television of Saints came out. Mm -hmm. uh, things had already started to get uh, pretty tough writing-wise. I was feeling very creatively blocked. Yeah. And then um, about a year later, you know, year into that record cycle, after a bunch of hard touring, I just I realized I hadn't written a single song, and a, an entire year had gone by. And for me, that's I mean, that's a pretty big deal because yeah. I mean, I've been. Uh, you know how many times I've been into KXP, but I've been I've been writing records like crazy since I was 13 years old, and songs have just been pouring out. And uh, was this the first time in your life that you went that long? Yeah, song? yeah. Uh, since you know, since I had started writing songs, yeah. um, it was the first time I'd really dealt with uh, writer's block. And um, you know, I think it it really came down to um, just the way I was relating to the creative process uh -huh. and. Um, you know, I realized that summer, by the summer of last year, I guess, um, or uh, 2013, actually, um, that I, I, I just wasn't, I hadn't written anything and I couldn't just keep faking it. I, I needed, I was totally burned out, wanted to get off the road. And so, yeah, I just decided to quit. And then um, it took about another year before things opened up and I started writing again, um, like last summer. What was that? What was that year without music like for you? For someone who's who's so used to having music, you said since you were thirteen, your family's very musical. You've been part of bands, and was that uh, ultimately obviously a good thing? But at the time, did you? It was struggle it, through that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was one of the hardest, darkest years of my life. I think you know, music has always been there for me as an outlet, um, kind of a way of somewhere to put the madness and just to deal yeah. with this this crazy experience of life and. Yeah. You know, and so without that, I was uh, I was kind of going crazy. I just didn't, you know. But but what I realized is uh, back to what I was saying about the creative process. Like I just I think I was looking at it wrong. You know, it really came down to a shift in perspective when I started writing again. Um, you know, I was being really self-critical, mm -hmm. overly judgmental of my own writing, and um, you know, I think just too much of a perfectionist. And I think whenever we get in that space and we're trying to be creative, it just shuts things down. And, um, you know, I had just um, I had gotten too way too controlling of the process. Right. And so when I started to let go of that and, you know, I think taking time off and deciding I wasn't going to push it or, or, or um, you know, try to force things allowed that to happen. It was an incredibly painful year and a, and a hard experience to go through. But... Um, I'm just so excited now to be back to writing and things are flowing better than ever now and I'm just trying to have a good time with it. Um, I really relate to the process through lyrics and uh -huh. through writing 
and I feel like I've always joked about I feel like a writer kind of trapped in a musician's life <laughs> and body <laughs> but um, you know I got my English literature degree from the University of Washington yeah. and I've always uh, the English just always came easy to me and I love reading and writing poetry and and so uh, that was essentially was the key you know it kind of got things going for me again and uh, I've just been writing nonstop since then, so I'm already working on another record. That's awesome. And, yeah, it, feel, it feels good to be back yeah. to work and really have a sense of purpose that came out of this. You know, I, I realize my my life's calling is you know I'm going to be playing music the rest of my life. Good so for you, feels good. When you give when you're giving up music or, or not listening to music or or not playing music, I should say, were you able to listen to music during that time? No. Or did you just, I was, it just was, I'm done? Yeah, I was so burned out on all of it. Wow. I wasn't listening to music. Yeah. If I was, it wasn't anything remotely yeah. similar to, you know, <laughs> something that would remind me of right. of uh, my career in music and what I was trying to accomplish. And, you know, I just I just had to get away from it altogether. What brought you back? What was it? Was there moments? Was it a, was it a tiny little <laughs> process? Was there a spark? Do you, you remember know, that? I, it was, I feel like it was, I was thinking about this. It was last summer. Um, when I when I started writing like crazy and I wrote like 30 songs in a two month period I mean it was just went from nothing to you know 100 miles an hour all at once and and that was was crazy I mean just to, sh to shift over like that but did you say I'm going to write now or did just no. out of nowhere you just yeah, started it sketching? just started it started pouring out wow. and it was you know it's hard to say exactly what what the turning point was but I think it was really just back to a shift in perspective of just kind of realizing oh I'd been the way I was relating to it I was being way too critical and you know just we all have that critical or the critic the internal critic oh, sure. or the external critics that we've listened to too much you yes. know for our, there's a creative <laughs> person inside all of us that just wants to make something you know and so that was just shut down and I realized that and so I just stopped listening to that that input and that voice and um, I think that was a big part of it. I was also on tour with my brother Cody, and he helped out because he was, he was, uh, you know, he was listening to a lot of music and getting me to listen to music, and it just kind of opened things up. And it went back to the lyrics again, yeah. Because I was listening to, of all things, a record by this band called The Killers. Maybe you heard of them? Yes. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> not. <laughs> um, but I had never heard their music. I would never guess you were listening to The Killers to get you. Back. <laughs> that wouldn't have been my guess. I know it's kind of no, it's kind it's of surprising. Cool. No, I mean, it, it was a strange turn, That's but funny. for me too, I wouldn't yeah. have expected it. But um, he put that record on. It's Samstown. That was the record that sort of <laughs> yeah. broke things open for me. And I mean, the lyrics are insanely good and That's well written on that record. And and then um, I just think the way Brandon Flowers plays with words, and he he turns turns a phrase, and and that caught my attention. And I was just it was at the, the you know that gets lost point. too. That gets lost in all of that. There are some there's some really good lyrics in that actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that probably gets overlooked in all it the does. all the the glitz and glamour yeah. of, of what those guys are doing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I'm glad you heard it. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. That wasn't on my list of albums. You might have <laughs> knocked you back into it, but I'm very happy to hear it, Rocky. Cool. Uh, and he's going to be out on the road. I'm sure listening to all kinds of stuff. Yep. While you travel. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about it, but we'd love to hear another song if you want. Let's ready. do it. All right. Yeah, this song's called Sawdust and Shavings. This was one of the first ones I wrote when cool. I started writing again. Sawdust and shavings for rent here. Power lines through all the summer woods, my dear. But I'm hoping and that hope is linked to your tears Let love be your only teacher And drum it up The sea is restless tonight Why do this love and madness look so much alike? tonight You have no idea The power on the dark side There's a voice without words If you can listen The key The crows And the nightingales quiet it's driving you mad with each revelation Let love be your only teacher You 
walk from the tavern out into the street Drinking your passion, stumbling in disgrace And close both your eyes to see anything Keep the door of your heart open Andromeda, the sea is restless tonight Why do this love and madness look so much alike? Andromeda sees restless tonight. KEXP, Rocky Votolato, here on The Morning Show. I love that song. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> that can't, they can't always be easy to play, though, right? Like, when you get so personal, is it hard to be? I mean, you're live on the air. <laughs> you're in front of people. I, I, don't know how, I don't know how people do it. Yeah, it's, you just get used to it after a while. <laughs> I don't know how you do what you do, John. It's early. I mean, it's, it's incredible to me to be, you know, you talk so much on the radio. That's the part that's hard for me, especially at the shows. You know, it's like yeah. the music becomes second nature, but I admire that when somebody can just, you know, free flow and, and talk to people. Well, all the I appreciate time. that very much. I, I, I think that, um, do you have to, uh, for me, I would think you would almost have to step outside of yourself a little bit. When you're singing these songs to, to people, I mean, do you, or, or is it do you get more personal about the song when you're playing for people? Do you, do you know what I you mean? Know, like, yeah, I think it's um, for me. I I get more personal. Like, I I just kind of come into into myself. That's what I'm trying to do more because I think that allows for a real connection with people. Yeah, and especially on the living room tour I just did. I mean, that's sure. really what I was cultivating with that kind of tour, and it's what I enjoy most. You know, I think that's that was a big part of getting back to music was realizing that's that's why I'm doing it you know is, is that connection with people and there is kind of a there's a healing element in it all for me and so you know I, you have to be present for that to to really connect so it, it's a little bit more I guess um nerve-wracking sure you know? and 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 uh and it's harder to commit to that but you know if, if I'm not there like and really just kind of feeling the moment or living what those songs are about I feel like I'm kind of hiding Sure, that makes sense. I, I I I like to think of you right before you like knock on the door to the living room tour show, <laughs> <laughs> and, and then in the back of your mind, like, man, I hope these people don't abduct me. That it's would it, that yeah. would just suck. <laughs> there, <laughs> my <laughs> wife gives me a hard time, April, all the time because I I make this joke about you know, well, I haven't ended up I haven't ended up locked in a basement yet, you know. <laughs> I go right there, like, or there's just like you know, like a pig on a spit, just like spinning around, like. Right. Hey! <laughs> or a bachelor party or something. Just like, gonna oh. get, it's going to get turned into a skin suit. Yeah. <laughs> that's, where the, that's where my mind would go just as my hand's about to knock on the door. I'd go right. to like Pulp Fiction and be like, mm, yeah, you I don't know. know. This I've, seems like a mistake. I've got an amazing fan base, and it's been, I've just been so lucky because they, I it's imagine been just that's great, great, yeah. great people and great experiences over and over. I did 34 shows on that wow. last tour in, in different houses. And what a way to connect with people, too. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been really fun. It's one thing to see a show. It's another thing to be standing in your living room playing the song. So Yeah, it doesn't get any more intimate, I guess. No, so. I agree. <laughs> so you're going to tour. You're heading out. You're going through Europe. You got the band. And for you, you've been out to Europe to tour. And is it the experience for you? How different is it from touring here in the U.S.? Is it? It's it's pretty different. You know, I mean, I think people are the same everywhere. And, and, uh, and my fan base feels there's a similar kind of connection. It's... it's um, it's just, you know, the people are, they just have a different vibe over there a sure. little bit. And, and I feel like they, um, 
I don't know, there's a different kind of enthusiasm, different excitement, especially about my music. I've been been doing really well in Europe uh, the last few years, and and so it's it's exciting to go to you know some random town in Italy and have people show up and <laughs> you know get recognized That's on the awesome. street in Spain and That's like great. you know it's 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 definitely cool. Do they listen differently in there? I've heard that a few times. It depends on the city, but is you know during a you during a quiet set. Uh, you know, not to get down on us Americans, we tend to talk. <laughs> and I it frustrates me if, if I'm at a show, for sure, but there tends to be people during a quiet show who talk during the shows. Is it any different? Do you notice cities or, or shows that are better about that? You know, I think in general there's just more distraction these days at shows, especially with the phones. Yeah. I mean, so I just, I mean, I try not to pay attention to it, but that's just sort of a, an evil that I think all live musicians are dealing with yeah. you know, at, at live shows. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, I mean, it's really, it's city to city on that. I'd say yeah. even more than, than country to country because it just depends on the group of people that come and whether or not they're invested in like being present and experiencing the, the show versus checking Instagram. And Can you, you know. tune that out? Are you able to? Or does it get, if, because once it gets to you, I imagine you're, you're kind of stuck now. Like, oh. Yeah, I try not to. I do that when I drive. Like once I notice something, <laughs> like, oh man, they, totally. don't, they don't signal. Now that's all I'm going to focus right. on. You know, like yeah. are you up there? I like mean, some days are better than others. Sure, okay. I'll just say that. That's fair. But, but um, you know, it's always nice when you get people that are attentive and, yeah. they, and that aren't on their phone. Well, just remember, <laughs> watching a sh- when you watch it through your phone, you're missing the entire show. You yeah, a lot of times. You can just yeah. watch the artist play. <laughs> Rocky Votelado is playing a lot of shows, and we look forward to your return to Seattle again. Some shows close, too, in L.A. down at the end of August and San Francisco. You have shows through the U.S. Uh, if you're in any major city, you're going to be there. So make sure you check and see Rocky Live. He's great. Got one more for us? Got one more All song. Right. Yeah. Songs uh, also from Hospital Handshakes. The song's called The Finish Line. My name is inmate number 30268, and I decided not to stay. I doubt they'll kick up any fuss or roadblocks for an old crook like me. I was in the path of the tornado. I just didn't expect the spinning would last as long as it has, you know, so I keep repeating I just keep repeating there's always hope no good thing ever dies the river is carrying each one of us to the finish line one day
Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.